What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're gonna be adding Crashlytics to our Firebase and Flutter app. So what this does, and you can watch the video for more information, basically it's going to log all the errors that happen in your production app. So you can see what, any, what if any issues your users are having. First thing we're gonna do is go into Firebase here, and if you go down to the left and click Crashlytics, you'll get kind of the same information, same video, all that stuff there. And we wanna enable it. We're gonna enable it for both of our apps. So we can do Android first. So just go ahead and click enable there. And now it's gonna basically start looking for your app to be sending some sort of crash to the Firebase console. So we need to set that up now in our code. We're going to be following the Flutter Fire tutorial here that basically is going to get us set up on it. So open up Android Studio to the code and the first thing we're going to do is add that package in the pubspec.yaml and that package is going to be called Firebase Crashlytics. This is the current version right now and this is also the version that works with Firebase Core 5.0. If you don't have this version of Firebase Core then you need to get up to that version. And I do have a video of how to upgrade to Firebase Core for 0.5.0. Now we're just gonna run pub get. To configure it for Android, there are a few things we need to add. Firstly, go into the Android folder over here and then find the build.gradle file. And we need to add one class path to this dependencies here. And that class path is going to be for Firebase Crashlytics. Once that's done, you can save that and then go into the app and find the build.gradle for the within the app directory. And we're similarly going to add one line here. This is gonna be kind of up towards the top where you have all these applies here. You want it before the Android block and it is just going to be this plugin that you're going to be applying. Save that. And now you can try and run the app, but I believe it is actually not going to work because there are a few dependency issues that we currently have with Android. But go ahead and run it so you can see those errors. Okay, yes, just as expected, you can see this is a failure that we're getting and the failure is kind of because of the dependency of Android X core version. And the way we can solve this is actually by upgrading our version of Kotlin. So you wanna go back into this build.gradle on the Android, within the Android directory here. And we're just going to be updating two things. Firstly, this Kotlin version. We're going to change this from 1.2.71 to 1.3.21. Then we're going to change the tool, the Android tools build Gradle here from 3.2.1 to 3.3.1. And if you save that and rerun the app, you should get the app at least running. All right, so at this point you can see the app is running, but we didn't fully finish setting up Crashlytics yet, so we need to go into our main.dart file here and actually import the package for Crashlytics. And that is going to look like this, it's Firebase Crashlytics. Next we need to set our app to log any of those errors that we would normally get from Flutter to that Crashlytics Firebase service. So we can do that right below, or we can do that right above the run app here. And the line we're going to add is flutter error dot on error. So when our flutter app errors, we want to set that error to Firebase Crashlytics instance, and then we can call record flutter error. And we're not going to pass it any parameter. So at this point, any errors that we would get in flutter will now be recorded in Crashlytics. So to test this, we can actually add a crash within our main.dart still. If we go to the init state here, and we just add this line, which is Firebase Crashlytics instance.crash. When we run the app, it's actually going to crash the app. All right, so not exactly what I would have expected. We are not getting that exact crash. If you read through some of the logs here, it looks like it's not even finding Firebase Crashlytics. So I think we need to run a Flutter clean on this. So go ahead and stop the app and then run Flutter clean. And I commented this line out because I really want the app to just be able to run and get us past that, past that splash screen. So go ahead and run the app again. 
All right, so after running that flutter clean, you can see we do get past that splash screen. So that is exactly what we want. Now we can actually uncomment to this line and do the simulated crash. We can run the app again, and now the app should open up for a little bit and then immediately crash. We shouldn't even get to this page. It'll just, it'll just bring us outside of the app itself. So once that happens, it actually will log the event but it won't sync it to Firestore until we actually relaunch the app. You can see this pops up. Now we sh would expect to go back to the home page of the app or of the device, which is good. So the app just crashed. We're just going to remove this line again and now run the app. And this should actually go ahead and sync that information up to Firebase. All right, the app launched, and this time it should not crash because we removed that line, which it did not. So now if we go over to our Firebase console and refresh, we should get this updated. It might take a little bit for this to actually register, so wait a few minutes and then refresh this page. All right, I did have to move through that first page and then Crashlytics loaded up for the Android version of our app. So you can see there were three crashes because I was testing this a few times and the crashes were actually those test crashes. So to get this working on iOS, we can go over to the iOS version of our app and you can see it's back on that, that page where we can enable it here. And it's a very similar process, but there is a slight difference in the configuration. We want to open up the actual project in Xcode. So if you go if you right click on the iOS folder, you can go to Flutter and then open an Xcode. We're gonna click on the runner over here and then we're gonna click on the build phases. And we wanna click this small plus sign here, which will allow us to uh, add a new run script phase. And we're going to rename this here to run script crashlytics. You don't need to rename it, but it's nicer when you're looking later to, to be able to find it. It won't just be called run script. So the run script here, we're going to add this one line, which is, I'm going to copy over, but this line right here, which is our our pods root and then Firebase Crashlytics run. That will be it for there. So if we save this, then we can go back into Android Studio and we're going to have a similar issue that we did with our with our Android app in that it's not going to run initially. Let's run the app and then we can look at what that error is. Okay, so you can see when we try and run it, there are these issues. And if you look, it's really a CocoaPods issue. So this is fixable. How we can fix it is going into the terminal here. So really what we need to do is regenerate this podfile.lock and the reason for that is because some of the versions of our dependencies in this podfile.lock are outdated or at least not compatible with our new crash lytics dependency. So this is kind of a pain, but to regenerate it is pretty simple. So what you're gonna do is you're going to go into the iOS directory, which is actually this folder right here. And then we're just gonna remove that podfile.lock. So do rm for remove and then podfile.lock. Uh, you do not wanna remove the pod file itself, but just the lock file. If you click up here, you can see it goes away. The next thing we're gonna do is just install the pods again. So that's gonna regenerate that podfile.lock. So pod install, and we're going to add this flag for repo update. So that will get our podfile.lock up to the newer version of our dependencies. All right, and then once that's done, we're also going to, we can actually go back a directory, back out of that iOS directory, and then we're gonna run a Flutter clean again. And then once we do that, we can go ahead and run our app again. At this point, we're expecting our app to run as normal and just show us that initial home page view. All right, that looks good. The app loaded as we would expect. So now we can simulate that crash by uncommenting this line and then rerunning our app. Same thing should happen. It should launch real quick and then crash. All right, and the app just did launch and crash real quick there. So 
I will now comment this out and we should be able to run the app as normal this time and it should come back up. All right, so now the app is running. So if we click back into there, we should see over here that our crash lytics is set up for the iOS version now as well. And just like the Android version, it might take a few minutes here. So while we're waiting for that iOS version to sync up, go back to the Android version and you can see you can see kind of what this actually entails. So you, you'll see there's three total crashes, one user affected, that's because my test user was the one user. And it's nice because this will give you a lot of good data over how many users are affected and how much percentage of your total user base was affected by a specific crash. So down here, you can see a little bit more specifics about that crash. If you click into it, you can, you can get more, I mean, you can get all this data about it, the device type, the, the time, obviously. And then there's even this log of kind of what was going on. And then you can look through all of this stuff that basically will help you find out what that issue was. This one being a fake event that we created just in the main app it is actually logged right here so you can see this this is a test crash caused by calling crash so normally if this was a real crash it would it would give you more information kind of like what line of the code errored and what what was basically causing the error now it's not going to tell you how to fix it but it is going to be very much similar to what you would see in the running log of your like for instance this log over here it would be the same thing that you would see over here when you're doing your development, although this information is going to be from your production app, from actual users when that crash happens. So it would be nice if you never see any crashes logged, but that is pretty much not gonna happen. So you want to make sure when those crashes do happen, you can be on top of it and fix it as soon as possible and get a new updated version of your app out there so that the crash no longer is occurring. Now we can actually go back and check if that iOS version has loaded and it should basically just look the same. All right, and eventually that did load up here. If it doesn't work immediately for you, give it a few minutes. All right, so you'll see there are two issues here which are actually kind of related. The main issue is this dsim file is missing. dsim is debug symbols. So when your app is compiled for iOS, there are these debug symbols that are generated and Crashlytics doesn't know what those debug symbols mean. So if you click over here, you can see these are the, these UIDs here are basically, these relate to something, but Crashlytics doesn't know what they relate to. So we need to give it a file that will let it know what the symbols mean. Um, really this would happen automatically, but since we're in debug mode, the symbols aren't being generated in the proper format. So if you did build your app in release mode, then it should work as you would expect. So we're just going to make it so the symbols are generated in debug mode, just so that we can see this working now. Go into Xcode and go to the runner and then go to the build settings. And you're going to, if you go to the build settings and type in dsim, the debug information format should be dwarf with dsim file. Originally that was just sent set to dwarf. So you want to set it to both that and then you need to rerun the app. And then once you rerun the app there, it's still going to take you, it's still going to take a couple minutes for that to update. But once that does, all of that decent information should be sent from your app. So that will get you set up on iOS. If you do have any issues with that DSIM setup or aren't able to get this working, go ahead and comment down below and I will do my best to try and help you figure this out. But all right, that's gonna be it for this video. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. All right, ciao for now.